into groups, uh, and then the, the students can uh, discuss in a group, and I can come visit them. So right now I'm going to t to uh, make some groups here to show you how it works, and then I'll get you all back into this main meeting in a couple of minutes. But let's see, let's make make a three, two, three. So no, I made three groups. We're all still in the main meeting, but now I'm going to send you out in the group rooms, okay? Okay, so 69, Shingis, Nuri, and Sanar, can you hear me? Can you repeat one more time? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you said Chingis and Janar. Uh huh. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, it's other people then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go into the next room. So, breakout two, Amadi, Hasim, on Salim. Yes, can I'm here, Ahmadi. Yeah. You can hear me? Good. Excellent. I'm going to I'm gonna um, get you back into the main meeting in just a few seconds. And... Finally, Andre, Julia, and Tile, can you hear me? Yep, okay, good. So I'm going to get you back into the main meeting now. I just want to... Uh, to show you how it works. Let's see, get myself back in there too. All right, so now you're back in the main meeting. Can you just confirm that you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good, perfect. Okay, so this, this is how it works. So we have uh, an assignment and we discuss that together and um, if it's possible, I, I'd like to keep the students in the main meeting, but like I said, if there are too many of them, uh, I had to divide them into groups. And you just saw how I, how I did that. Um, then I go into each group and listen a little bit. You know, they can talk and, and discuss. And when it comes to oral proficiency in German, for example, it's really important that the students also get the chance to talk a lot. And if we're all in one group, like we have 40, 50 students, you know, maybe you say one sentence in 90 minutes and that's not good. So that's also why we have this breakout room so we can uh, let the students talk. Now I can't, of course, hear everybody all the time, but I can at least be, say, 10, 15 minutes in each group and, and listen and see how they're doing. Uh, they can also send me a message. If I'm in another group room, they can send me a message and, you know, I, hey, good, and we need help. Can you come into our room? Um, so they can always get in contact with me. So, but how do the students know what uh, to do? Well, we have an, another system that works together with Adobe Connect, and that is what we call Learn. And in Learn, uh, every course has its own course room. And in this room, only the students that are registered on the course have access to this room, and the teacher, of course. In this room, they find all the materials that they need to uh, fulfill the course. And I'll try to share my screen with you. I hope that it works. Much, uh, sometimes it's a little bit, uh, it doesn't work good, but I'll, I'll try it. And you can tell me if you can see. Um, my screen is being shared. Okay. Can you now see uh, a page where it says Högskolan Dalarna and there's a 
a blue uh, where I have the mouse it assignment. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so you all see my screen now. That's good. Now mm -hmm. we're in Learn, and this is uh, uh, the course room for Russian uh, Beginners Course 2. Uh, unfortunately, all the information text is in Swedish. We can't change that uh, because it's a Swedish platform, but it doesn't really matter. I just want to show you uh, how it works. So when the students uh, sign up for a course, they get access to this course room, and this is what they see when they go in there. This is what the Russian students, the people that want to uh, study Russian, uh, first semester, this is what they see when they come in there. On the left-hand side, we have uh, some menus. We have start page, I'll show you here. Uh, Unslog, that means um, um, news, course information, course materials, uh, assignments, my results, meetings, forum, and my messages, uh, participants, and groups. Okay, so this is what, they, what the students see. What's interesting for us now uh, is the course materials. So I'll go in there. Um, I'm a participant in this, in this uh, course, and this is why I have access to it and not to my German courses, but I thought I'd show you something uh, that you might understand a little bit. Um, previously, the teacher has uh, programmed or has um, um, published all the different seminars here. So as you can see, it's seminar 7 to 12 because this is course number 2. Course number 1, we had seminar 1 to 6. Uh, and if I go in there, I know, you can see here, Seminar 10, for example, uh, it's on the 12th of March, uh, 2018, so the date is there, so I know on the 12th of March, March I have to be prepared to do this. Um, in this course, we have seminars in English and in Swedish, so we'll open the seminar uh, uh, assignment in English. So this is what I get a couple of days before the seminar. This is the, um, the assignment that I have to prepare. And then we meet in Connect, Adobe Connect, where you are now, to discuss this, this seminar, this assignment. Um, so it works uh, really good. I, I know exactly what I have to do every week because it's all here in Course Materials, you know. Uh, we also have here, for example, uh, we have a word list, we have the exercises, and we have the keys for the exercises, and we also have a seminar group work. That means students meet um, on their own in Adobe Connect in a so-called student room, and we, get, we can do these exercises without a teacher. So this is just extra for us. This is just service. Um, so that works really well. Um, okay, so this is what we do together with the teacher. But we also have, each week, we have assignments that we have to do. And this is assignment three, and the deadline is on the 26th of March at 10 o'clock. Um, if I'm too late, if I'm not ready, if I haven't finished the, the assignment at 10 o'clock on the 26th of March, uh, it will land in a, um, at another place where it says that it, the assignment is late so the teacher can see that the student didn't do what he was or she was supposed to do. I'll look at the assignment. Okay, now there's something wrong there. Okay, I don't know why. Uh, no, I don't know. Oh, we're in the wrong course. Okay. Now I know why it doesn't work. Here. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't want to open right now. I don't know why it doesn't work, but it doesn't matter. Um, so we also have we all have all the um, um, the assignments and. There were originally in this course four. Now two of them uh, are too late, so then they disappear. So I can only see the assignment that is um, that is for this week, so so to say. 
And completing, I hear that means those are the late, if, if I'm late, I can put my, my assignment in there. Otherwise, I turn it in here uh, as a document, and uh, it then lands in another file. If I want to see how I'm doing on this course, I can go to my results. Um, this is an assignment. This is assignment one that I uh, turned in on the 26th of March, or actually I turned in a little bit uh, earlier than that. Uh, and I can uh, see my result here is one uh, out of one, so that was good. And if I click on this, maybe I can even see. Yes, I can see it. My teacher has corrected this for me. So this is what I turned in. And this is what Otto Koffing Tran, this is what my my teacher has written to me. You can now it's it's in Swedish, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so I can go through my my assignment and see where I made a mistake. And I made a few here. I think it's further down a little bit. I, I wrote something stupid. Let's see. Yeah, here. I haven't looked at it yet, so I don't know what what I did what I did wrong, but Something isn't, isn't right here. So um, my teacher corrects that, and so I also have an individual, um, my, 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 my own faults and mistakes. I can see exactly what I did wrong, which is very good. There, I think I just had to answer some questions. So that's really good because um, say that I miss uh, an assignment one semester. In the next semester, I can go back into my old course room and look under my results here. And I can then see, oh, okay, I have done uh, assignment one, two, three, but I didn't do number four. Fine, then I can turn that in the next semester. And the system will tell me that I'm no, I have now completed all the assignments. And it will also send uh, a message to my teacher uh, that this student has, a student has now completed all the assignments and will ha would like to have a grade on this course. The same thing is with the seminars. They also, uh, we also register them so that I know exactly. I don't have to write it down. I don't have to have an Excel. A sheet or something like that because the system keeps track of everything for me. So I can just go in, I give in the, the type in the name of the students, and the system comes back to me and says, okay, this student, uh, this is what he or she has done, and this is what's still missing. So that saves a lot of time for me as a teacher because I don't have to keep track of all the results and all who missed what seminar and who didn't turn in which uh, which assignment and things like that. So that's really, really good. Now, say that I'm finished with the course. Uh, then I, of course, want to have my grade for this course. And we also have uh, a system for that, which is almost automatic. I'll show you that as well. And this is a national student uh, system. Uh, I can only log in with my university, of course. So I log into that, and I'm already in there. And now there are a lot of German courses here uh, because this is my normal login page. And uh, I can see here this is all. These are all the courses where I have to give grades when the students are finished. But right now there's still these are courses that are still going on, so uh, I don't have any messages messages uh, messages here for you know, grades that I need to report. Uh, further down here, if we go down a little bit, I see that I have something here. I have to test something. I have to uh, give in a grade for a student. So I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to show you the student's name. But, but the system tells me, you know, th this student has finished something and you need to get to it now. Um, if I want to see how a student is doing, I can just uh, search this student. I'll look up myself now. Uh, because I don't want to, want to show you the, the names of my students, but this is my last name. And I have just finished the course for Russian uh, last semester, so that should be in there. Lots of Rundins, uh, and that's me. 
So I'll go in there and look. Uh, I can see here I have three courses. Uh, this is uh, uh, didactics uh, for, for uh, higher education. I finished that. That was a long time ago. And this is Russian. So I want to see, okay, I finished the course. This is green screen here uh, in January this year. But if I want to see what grade I got, I have to go in here and click on that. Uh, and there are three, three uh, smaller courses um, in one course. And I can see my grade here. And this means very good. So um, I know exactly what I have done and what I still need to do to get my get my, my grades. Uh, after this is done, uh, this system goes on to our national system for university studies, and that is called Antalning.se. Here we have all the courses for all the university uh, universities and colleges in Sweden. Uh, and here I can look up uh, an education. I'll write it in Swedish now. I'll search for Russian. Uh, and now it's uh, it's the summer of 2018, and that's usually vacation in Sweden. Uh, the uh, the new period for university studies in the fall of 2018 opens tomorrow, so we can't really see very much. But there's at least one one summer course for Russian Russian today, and it's given by the University of Gothenburg. And it's an internet based, I can see it's, uh, it's flexible, and that means that you can study it from wherever you are. And if I choose that, I get in there, and I can apply for this, for this course if I want to, but I, I don't want to study it now. Um, so this system, Antagning.se, works together with the one that I just showed you, LADOC. So all the grades are reported into LADO, to the former system, and imported by Antagning, and so when I apply for a course, Antagning goes through to see, okay, do you have uh, the prerequisites that you need to study this course? If not, it's going to send me a message and say, well, you didn't finish Russian 1, so you can't go on with Russian 2. So all these systems work together, and that's, that's really good. Um, okay, so we'll go uh, out. Let's see, I'll, I just want to go in and see if I can go into one of my German courses and show you the... No, that's last semester, we'll go into this one. This is the German grammar course. Um, yes, I'll show you here. Uh, this is my front page for my German course. Uh, and uh, first of all, I have, if there's, and if, if there's something new that comes up there, it's information for the students. Uh, but I also have something here for me as a teacher. I have uh, an assignment here that needs to be um, corrected. So I look at that, and it comes up here. Uh, If I can get into it, yeah. Hmm. Let's see if it opens up now. Uh, where is it now? Hmm. There it is, maybe. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So, this is what I have to. This control, control of Gabe of Deutsch, in German uh, means I have to look at them, but they, but they usually, I, I actually don't have to correct them because they do that. I have a, it's automatically corrected. But this one looks a little bit different. This is something that they turned in on a, they wrote themselves, and the system can't. Uh, correct that. I have to do that manually. So here I have two. Uh, 
Hmm. I can't open it now. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes the system doesn't give me access to it, but it doesn't really matter uh, as long as I know. But this also helps me as a teacher because the system always gives me the in information, you know, this is what needs to be corrected now. The students don't have to wait very long because I always, I, I, I don't miss it. I, I have the information on my screen all the time. Uh, so I would say this works really good. So now we're back. I'm going to stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. Um, so this is how we worked. Uh, now I've talked about uh, half an hour and, and Andre said about 20 minutes. So I'm sorry. I took a little bit longer than I thought. But do you have any questions? No, I think everything is clear. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I can't hear you, Julia. Can you keep, can you t p pick up the uh, microphone? Yeah. We all we only have online uh, courses. We don't have any campus courses at all in Germany in Poland. I think that has to do with feedback. That's why the system is so good, because it shows me as a teacher what I have to correct. And if I get the things back to the students fast, they usually have a high motivation. If they have to wait two, three weeks before they get the stuff back, then they just, you know, they get pissed off and then they, they don't do anything. So that is really, really important. I think it works with that, you know, everything uh, really, when it comes to learning, you need to get feedback to know that you're on the right track. Yeah, we have different uh, types of assignments. You know, it could be that the students have to have, have a presentation. It could be a PowerPoint presentation that they do here in this room. Uh, and they have to present that to other students. Uh, when it comes to defending um, essays, for example, we usually have a group and they, all, they have to, to defend their own essay, but also uh, post to, to some other students' essays. So that works really good. Or we could say, okay, you need to, um, you need to put together um, a sem your seminar and, and present this to the other students, make a film, make a movie, uh, and present here in, in this classroom, for example. So we have lots of different pedagogical uh, tricks in these courses that we really didn't have on campus. Um, so And that's also, uh, uh, students are very, um, very good at this because they're usually better with, when it comes to technical things than we are. You know, we have our, our technicians that help us teachers, but the students usually, you know, they do all this uh, YouTube thing and they have their own channels and lots of things like that. So usually they, they do good things. Uh, Sanara, uh, uh, how about payment, these online courses? The courses are free, they don't cost anything. You have to buy maybe the books if you, if you uh, do a literature course, for example. Um, then you have to buy the books or the materials that you need for that, but you don't pay anything for the course. I said that in the beginning, the university has to buy it, and that's why. Uh, otherwise, I think if that were not so, I think that very many private people good teachers would start their own uh, education because um, you, you always find students, you know, but the platform is expensive.
it's suitable for all subjects except those where you have to be physical. I think about um, doctors, nurses, things like that. You can't give, give an injection online. You know, you have to practice that <laughs> on people. But otherwise, we had engineers, we have the whole teacher education in Sweden. Um, all subjects we do through LEARN. More questions? I think Andre has has a question. No. No, Andre, do you have a question? He wrote, "I have," and I just. He wrote something. I can't see that. Andre, can you turn on your mic? I have. Okay. Yes, and they turn on your microphone. Yes, now you should it should work. I can't hear you, Andre. Maybe you have the connection is too slow, could be. Yeah, the state pays for the education. Yes, it's a state diploma uh, in the final. Yeah. It's like any university uh, exam, it's, uh, or like doesn't matter if it's from here or if it's from Uppsala University. No, it's not only for Swedish students. We have students all over the world. You know, they sit. We have students in China. We have students in uh, in Australia. The only problem with them is that uh, the seminar, um, the seminars, we have to to plan them a little bit different because of the time change. You know. Uh, so everybody can take part. I don't know if you have to pay if you're not in the in the European Union, uh, but it's not very expensive, I don't think. Um, a lot of people always uh, also ask me since Andre asked if it's a state uh, diploma. Um, how do you know that the students uh, actually do what you think they're doing? For example. Uh, if we are uh, teaching German here, or if we're teaching, say, Russian, for example, how do my, does my teacher know that I wrote the assignment and not uh, Andre? I know a lot of Russian people. Uh, they could easily write this, this uh, assignment for me, and I turn it in, you know? Uh, but the thing is, uh, if I turn in a perfectly uh, composed assignment, and then in the seminar, in the oral seminar, I can't say anything in Russian. It's pretty obvious that I didn't do the assignment myself. So then uh, I can, as the teacher, say, okay, this looks a little bit suspicious. I want to see why, when you're writing the, the assignment. So then I, I can meet the students and we write together online. So that works, uh, but but that very very seldom happens because our students uh, they don't they really want to learn. I I don't do a Russian course and let somebody else do the work for me because I I don't learn anything. You know, these aren't students in schools. So these are university students. Do you prepare translators? Yes, we do, Sanara. We prepare translators, and the system works very well for that.
Okay, bye bye, Shana. No, we don't work with textbooks, uh, Andre. That's a German phenomenon. Uh, we have produce our own materials most of the time. Uh, Sanara, if you if you want to be a translator, you just do the the regular uh, the basic courses for the language that you uh, want to translate into or from. Uh, just do if you want to. Which language are you interested in? English. Okay. So then you go to. You go to antalning.se or the .se, and then you look there for English, and and that should be the you. I think you also can read this page page in English. There, there must be um, also an English page, also, so you can see. And then you just start with English one, and go up to English four, and then you complete this by uh, going to the Translators um, Institute in Stockholm. And you do the the translation, um, uh, what's it called, the theoretical basis for translators with them. But first, you have to have the language. You have to have you have to show that I'm I, I have studied English, and and, uh, and then you can get in there. But they also have this also flexible on online courses. Yeah, good luck. How about exams? We don't have any exams. We have, um, uh, we, we, um, give notes, um, on each uh, on each assignment and on each seminar, and if you have uh, passed all your assignments and all your seminars, then you also get the notes. So we don't have uh, we don't have exams in that way. Some uh, some subject or the, some subjects have exams. For example, Russian uh, the Russian course that I took last year, we had a written exam at the end of the uh, course. And it was an automatically uh, generated um, test. Uh, and we had, I think it was a time limit there for three hours or something to finish. Uh, and one part was then automatically corrected, and then one part was corrected later uh, manually by the teacher. Andre, foreign students, uh, when it comes to language courses, uh, it's a bit. Uh, if it's well, well it's um, how should I, can I answer that? If you want to do the basic courses, you usually have to know Swedish because it's we contrast Swedish and English, for example. But if you're uh, above B level, we don't need now we don't need uh, Swedish knowledge. Then we just speak English or German or whatever. So uh, the further up in the system, the easier it is to get. Um, to, pa to pa participate without Swedish, we don't have an entrance exam. Uh, you send in your uh, your that what, you, what you've done, been done doing this. Uh, your you send in your 
your grades from your school or university or whatever. And we look at that and see, well, is it possible for him to, to uh, participate? And if yes, then we just let you in. No, no, you have to have uh, you have to fi have finished school before you can get in here. Alim, you, you uh, prepare your documents from school. They want to see that you have uh, secondary education. And if you also have university courses, you also um, send in those. All of this you can do at Antagning, and you can do that, of course, uh, electronically. Usually it works that way. Say, for example, somebody wants to study German. They send in their materials and they send in their grades from school and they also send in what, if the, maybe if they've done a, a German course somewhere in Germany or at university somewhere in, I don't know, Russia. Uh, and the, the people who get these documents can't really decide if the student has the um, the right knowledge to participate in a course, they just send it on to me and ask me, can you uh, look at this and, and tell me if this, student's, uh, if this student would make it on this course, what do you think? Uh, and usually that's not, no problem. And if, I don't, if I'm still not sure, I send an email to the student and ask him or her to, can you write me a couple of um, sentences about yourself? So I can see how you, how your German is. So it's really not very complicated. And if the I, I, if I get an email from a student and it's full of um, uh, mistakes and, and uh, grammar mistakes, then I'll send it back and say, well, I think maybe you should take the lower course. And if it's okay, then I say I'll send it on to Antonio and say this student is okay. Let him in. I think this would be a system that would also work in Germany, where I'm um, currently working. Um, but maybe one could combine it. We could have like an um, um, online course, one part of the C1 course, for example, and one part on campus or in the school. Uh, I think that would, how many courses the, at the university? Oh, I don't know, Andre, lots of courses. Uh, in German, we have, um, well, those are uh, smaller courses, say seven and a half uh, ECTS points. We have at least 50 just in German. In general, thousands, thousands of courses. If you want to look, if you want to look at the, what, what we have at my university, you can go to www.du.se. And there you can see all the courses, just uh, uh, type in um, what you're interested in and then you get all the courses there. And tomorrow is uh, the first day to apply for courses in Sweden uh, for uh, fall semester 2018. But you don't apply there, you don't apply at, uh, at du.se, so then you apply at antagni.se.
And um, we're also interested in working together with um, other institutes um, in other countries. So if you see some points where um, we could collaborate, collaborate um, please don't hesitate to contact the people in Sweden or at, the, at my university that are responsible for this um, subject. Uh, I'm sure they will get back to you uh, very, very soon and uh, be interested in working together. We also have classic courses. Um, uh, some subjects do. For example, um, nurses. The nurses uh, and also other, um, you know, like uh, painting, things like that, art, those courses. They, we also have them on campus, but uh, we see, a lot, I, I can't really understand it because I'm so old, but uh, our students want the online courses. That's why, that's, that's the courses for which they apply. Um, we have also courses in English um, on campus, but we have lots of more people um, online that study English than we have on campus. Yeah, I understand that, Andre. And there are so many things that you can do, you know. So that's why I laugh a little bit when 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 the deep up people bring me the so-called media media wagon. That's just kind of lustig. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. And if you if you uh, need to get in touch with me. Uh, and ha still have questions, there's my email address. Um, and I will be happy to, uh, to get you um, names of people that could be interested uh, or that could be interesting for you. Uh, I will be happy to, to um, convey that, that contact. Thank you too, Andre, and I'll see you at uh, quarter to two. Thank you all for coming, and bye bye.